right, so good afternoon. Beautiful Friday afternoon. I hope everybody is doing well. And um, I guess what I want to talk about today is um, our expectations on people and, and on ourselves and the different perspectives that each and every one of us has and how there's room for all of that. So I'm going to start off by reading a reading from my favorite little book here, Heart Talk, that I read from a lot. So why don't you get settled in, sit nice and comfortably, close your eyes, let your hands rest on your knees, and start to, hi Linda, start to let your breath flow naturally, but quite consciously. Allowing your breath to be a sense of a soothing factor as it moves in and out. Feel a sense of peace moving in and space moving out. Allow a sense of groundedness to fall over you like a warm blanket. Really move so deeply into the space of this moment. So this reading says that no two people are the same and no two people experience or process a situation the same way. Leave room for the other person's point of view. Our reality is not the only reality and it's not wise for us to believe that our reality is the only correct one. We're not here to see things the same way. We're here to share ideas and be in community with each other. And we can only do that by respecting each other's perspectives so that we may co-create a culture where everyone is better loved and kept safe. And think about that and how it might apply to your life. And then start to think about how maybe becoming more open to other people's perspectives, or maybe you already are, and how that can enhance your life, my life, right? Our minds are so limited to what we already know, to what we're used to, to what makes us comfortable, to the information that we've been fed through our lifetime. And there's so much more, you know, we're so limited in these bodies sometimes. We forget that we're these magnificent, infinite spiritual beings because we're so confined to these bodies. And we do the same thing with our mind. We're confined to the information that we have. That's why support groups work so well because it is so important to have more information coming in than what I've saved up in this mind of mine. No matter how much I've studied and no matter how much I have you know, written and made notes and read and how educated I am, there's always another perspective. And sometimes it's as simple as just listening when somebody is talking instead of correcting them or challenging them or trying to pull apart whatever the conversation is to see who's wrong or who's right. To just really listen and take it in and marinate in it. And then decide, is that perspective my perspective? Is that something that I could maybe shift to? Is that something, can I take a piece of that? and allow it to move me down a different road. Right? So just thinking about how you can open a little bit more to all of the different perspectives that I feel, I mean, I think it's always been, but now more than ever, I feel like there's this rising up that people are starting to speak up and they are starting to offer their truths a little bit more freely. Because sometimes we're afraid to offer our truths. Right? Sometimes we're afraid to speak you know, our opinions or talk about something that's been on our minds because we don't know how it's going to be received. What if each and every one of us created a space where everyone could step in and offer that information, offer their voice, a place where it can be received with openness, with respect, with a sense of peace and love. There's a quote by Martin Luther King, and he says that every man must decide whether he will walk in the light of creative altruism or in the darkness of destructive selfishness. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Right? And altruism is defined as the mindset of helping others wherever you can, when there, even when there's no direct benefit to you. 
But if you think about it, if everybody was able to slip into that mindset, if everybody helped who was in front of them, regardless of whether they would benefit directly from it or not, each and every one of us would receive the benefit of that because somebody would always be there to help us, you know? And what is help? That's another thing I want us to think about a little bit. What does helping mean? Is it helpful to do something for someone that you feel would be best for them? Or is it truly helpful to ask somebody, what can I do for you? How can I be of service to you? What do you want that to look like? And then proceed in that manner. I know with my children over the years, I've learned that very often when I thought I was just trying to help, what was really going on was that I was trying to get them to move in the direction that I felt they would be the safest or the happiness or would be best for them down the road. Or I was trying to maybe um, save them from consequences that I was sure was going to happen if they did something. And the bottom line is, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what other people's consequences are. I don't have a crystal ball. Sometimes I think I do. And so what if I allowed others the space to really let me know how I could be helpful rather than really trying to steer them in a specific direction? So a few thoughts to kind of embrace as we move through our practice. Let your hands float to your heart center. And we'll open with Om Namo, Guru Dev Namo. If you know it, please join with your voice, if not with your ears. Inhale. Om Namo. Guru Dev. yourself be embraced with the energy of your wisdom, the energy of the wisdom all around us, and then moving into our next chant, Ad Gere Name. We're going to do it as we always do as a celestial communication meditation, so if you're not familiar, just watch me as I move through it first time, and then when you're ready to close your eyes and dive in, please do. Three times together. Ad gure name Jugad gure name Sad gure name Siri Guru Deve Name Ad Gure Name Jugad Gure Name Sad Gure Name Siri Guru Deve Name Ad Gure Name Jugad Gure Name Sad Gure Name Siri Guru Deve Name. Mm. 
Allow the energy to settle. Sweet love of the universe, of the divine, of the goddess. Moving through you, creating a space for you to release the fear of being who you are. Step so fully into this human life. Courage, with compassion. But inhaling deeply, let that prayer come up overhead. Squeeze the pelvic floor, the navel center, the eyes roll up, your fingers really reaching to the sky. Hold that breath, that precious breath. Let it fill you, fill you, fill you. And then as you flip your hands, palms out, slowly release that breath, that energy those blessings back into the universe as your arms come wide and around. Noticing consciously connecting with the energy of you. And as your fingers touch the ground, connecting with the energy of Mother Earth. Hold that space of connection for a moment. And as you open your eyes, we're going to move into a little bit of a breath meditation. It's to balance the heart and the mind. So you're gonna simply take your hands and you're gonna hook your thumbs under your underarms. So it's gonna feel a little weird and then the rest of your fingers are gonna rest on your heart. Close your eyes. You're gonna inhale through a puckered mouth with a whistle. And exhale through your nose. So that's the breath. The mantra is so hung, which means infinity, I am thou, acknowledging that we are the infinite, that the infinite is inside of us. So, so hung. And what's going to happen if you listen to the whistle and then the exhale, you're going to hear the so hung. So listen, mentally vibrate so hung. You're not going to do it out loud, but listen with your ears and hear so hung being vibrated on your own breath. All right, so hands in place. Eyes closed, mouth puckered. And just keep going. Those thumbs are hooked under the armpits, fingers resting on the heart center. Three minutes, I'll let you know when. Lose yourself in this. I'm going to be quiet.
Next time that you inhale, keep that breath in, chest rises up, squeeze everything. Exhale your hands down to your knees. Pause and feel. It's meditation to connect to the soul body, to clear confusion. And allow the voice of the heart to guide the mind rather than the mind guiding the heart. It's always a better outcome for me when my heart is involved. Now with your hands on your knees, begin to circle around. Torso circles around your pelvis, using your hands as an anchor. Moving into yourself. So that permission that I talked about to allow others to be in their perspective, to be open to learn from others. It also moves back to ourselves. Can we give ourselves permission to really think what we think and feel what we feel and be who we want to be? Or are we keeping ourselves in that same box that we keep others in sometimes? If I don't do this this way, then I've failed, or I'm bad, or I'm doing a bad job, or I'm not a good person. Next time you come forward, pause, move in the other direction. There's another book that I revisit often. It's called Soul Love by Sanaya Roman. She talks about releasing your desires for others and experiencing the softness of soul love. And so Buck talks about the concept of seeing life through the eyes of our soul instead of our humanness. Come to center. Let your legs come out wide into a V. Begin by placing one hand on each thigh. And you're just going to start to slide over to the left, bringing your right arm all the way up your side, and then slide your right arm down your right leg, bringing your left all the way up. So just really twisting and bending. Yeah. And just keep going with your breath. So living from the eyes of the soul, the soul gives us so much more permission because the soul isn't bound by this human skin or by paychecks and taxes and price tags and all that stuff that the human body, that the human mind needs to deal with. So it's a whole different perspective. I'm going to read you as you move a little bit of this now. Another quality of your soul's will to love is its softness. Its love flows out softly, offering and inviting rather than pushing and controlling. It loves in a respective, gentle, non-intrusive way that honors the choices and paths of others. Next time you come up to center, stay. Inhale your arms up to the sky. As you exhale, twist slightly over to the left, and then let your right arm come down inside your right leg, left ear coming over, or left arm coming over your ear. And just really stretch it out for a moment. So just pausing there. And then inhale back to center. Exhale as you twist over to the right, left arm comes on the inside, right arm reaches over. Pause there. So your left arm is going to be inside your left leg. Right arm is going to be over the ear. Yeah, there you go. And then keep moving. Come up to center. Exhale down to the other side and just keep going. 
And then it goes on to say that we too can experience the softness of our soul's own love for ourselves. Your soul is always gentle and kind. It never orders you around or criticizes you. It offers you new ways to be, yet it lets you decide if you want to follow those new paths and choices. Watch how you use your will on yourself during the next few hours or the next few days. The next time that you move down, right arm inside, right leg, again, stay there. Really reach out. And then start to circle the left arm, opening up the shoulder a little bit. Bringing that arm to stillness, inhale back to center. Dive down to the other side, left arm inside left leg, and begin the circular motion, the right arm. Moving energy inside our bodies and also moving energy around our bodies, clearing our auric field, maybe even inviting in some new energy. Because what we seek, as Rumi says, is always seeking us. And so if you're looking to be a little bit more gentle on yourself or easeful or anything that you're looking for, the energy of that, your intention is calling the energy to you. And then bring that arm to stillness. Inhale everything up to center. Exhale, fold forward. Letting your arms bend if you'd like, touching your toes. Find some ease in here. Bending forward is any amount. And just find some ease and release here. You all look amazing. Letting it all go. Inhale up. Bring the soles of your feet together, Baddha Konasana. Place your hands around your toes or on your ankles. And just start to gently move your knees up and down. Gentle opening of those hips, of those groins. It's absolutely amazing what we can hold in our bodies. So gentle movement, gentle permission to Allow those harder places inside of us to soften. And so often I see people and myself too, doing the simplest, softest motions and just bursting into tears. Is there something about permission given to be soft, to let it all go, that just invites the sense of vulnerability? You let yourself be vulnerable. Let your knees be still. Take another deep inhale here. And as you exhale, moving your legs back into easy sitting pose. Just place your hands on your shoulders and begin to inhale left, exhale right. Twisting the spine a little bit. Allowing yourself to soften to get kissed by puppies, if that's what happens. I love that. <laughs> I was taking Cheryl's class yesterday, and her puppy was here, and he just started licking me all over my face and mouth as I was chanting. It was hysterical. He could not understand what was coming out of my mouth. We can learn a lot from our pets, right? Their playfulness and their pure love. Come to center. Let your hands come down. Roll onto all fours coming into tabletop. Put some padding under your knees if you like.
and then begin cat cows here really opening your heart and then really rounding into yourself you can exaggerate the movement moving toward release so other ways to bring different perspectives into our lives maybe watch a show that you never would have watched or read a book or a magazine that you never would have read just notice if there's something if there's a perspective there that surprises you i remember a while ago i saw this article on stoicism and i always thought of being stoic as being very cold and very blank and so i just kind of disregarded it and then you know how it is these days on our phones as soon as there's something that you know comes into a search or something all of a sudden you get all this stuff that relates to it i started getting these invitations to this website to uh have readings delivered on on stoicism and it was amazing to me what stoicism really is what my mind thought it was is not what it was you know and i've i've really enjoyed some of the teachings and i've even used them in my teachings you know for so long my mind was closed to even looking at that because i had an idea of what that word meant come to center and from here just begin to move back into child's pose let your knees go wide let your toes come together but as soon as you get into your child's pose, roll your heart forward, come back into cow pose. And then back into child's pose and just flow from cow to child's. Symbolic of how we can really so easily in these human bodies and in our human minds shift positions, come inside of ourselves and then open up. We can do it. It's our fears, it's our mind that gets in the way. And harshness is not going to help the mind feel secure enough to move into that place of vulnerability. It's the softness, your soul's love, the softness of your soul's love. Next time you come into child's pose, stay there. You can even make a pillow with your hands instead of having your arms stretched out if you'd like. And enjoy the flow of your own breath. Marinate in the beauty of your own energy. I'm going to read a little bit more from Soul Love. If you catch yourself forcing or pushing yourself to do something, stop. You do not need to force yourself to do things or to act in certain ways. Join with your soul to stimulate the hidden point to increase your will to love yourself. Treat yourself tenderly with respect and love. Remember, when you have treated yourself in this way, how good you feel about doing so. Let yourself acknowledge how good it feels to be gentle with yourself. We don't always have to be driven. Life can be exhausting when we're always trying to do what we think we're supposed to do. Take a breath here. And then as you come up to all fours, you're going to curl your toes, lift your hips up to the sky. Take a nice stretch and downward facing dog. And then bring yourself to center. Step your right foot forward, right next to your right hand. Planting that right hand, lift your left arm up to the sky. A little bit of a twist here. Not a little bit of a twist, a twist. <laughs> there you go, yep. Let that hand float down. Take a breath. And then lower the, bot, the back knee to the floor. Send it back a little bit so you're not right on that knee. And we're going to place our hands on our thighs. Slowly come up into Anjaneyasana. So first start on your thighs. Find your balance. 
And then when you feel moved to let your arms float up to the sky. You can even come into goddess arms, opening your heart a little bit. Or you can interlace your fingers and bring those palms up toward the sky. See what feels right for you here. And once you find your hand position, take a deep breath in all the way down to the root. A complete exhale as your hands float back down to frame your front foot. Lift your back knee. Step your front foot back. Take another stretch here. And then step your left foot forward. Right next to that left hand, planting the left hand, taking the twist to the other side. Right arm up to the sky. I can see all your faces this time, I think. Oh, almost all of you. All right. <laughs> and then let that hand float down. Pause for a moment. Drop the back knee. Let it slide back a bit. Find your balance. And then open to Anjana Asana. Find a different hand position this time. See what will bring you softness. Take a deep breath. And on the exhale, plant your hands, frame that front foot. And this time you're going to step the back foot forward, coming into Uttanasana. Finding yourself in forward fold. Maybe shaking your head from side to side a little bit. Letting that neck go. Deep breath in and out. And bend your knees a lot. Inhale your arms wide and up. Bring yourself all the way up to stand. Arms up in the air. Breathe here. Inhale and exhale. Reaching up to the sky. Feeling yourself extending up to infinity. And your feet grounding down into the dense, solid energy of the earth. Being held and yet expanding. Imagine for a moment that you are your soul, because you are, but imagine that you know you're your soul. And feel your hands spiraling up and up and up and up into the heavens as far as you want them to go. And feel your feet reaching down, down, down into the earth, into the depths of the unknown, the mystery below. And then maybe notice the energy flowing through your body, through your mind. And acknowledge that you are that which your hands and your feet are connecting you to at this moment. You are the infinite and you are the divine earth. You are the foundation. And you are everything else. And bring your palms together down to your heart center. Pause here. I'm going to try a little bit of a standing flow. It's called the Param Karam Dharma Kriya. And it's four movements that evoke the expansion of our vision, the broadening of our perspective. It evokes courage, the courage of a warrior. And then it allows us to open and receive the blessings that flow back when we move into the world with so much love and so much valor. So you're going to inhale your arms up to the sky and step your right leg back behind you. And then as and then exhale. And on the next inhale, you are going to bring your palms together overhead. Step your right foot forward, cross it over your left knee and you can either be off the floor or you can step that those toes of that left foot on uh, the right foot onto the floor. Take a deep breath here. Exhale. And on the next inhale, take that right foot off of the knee. Step it forward, coming into archer pose. So you're going to step that leg forward. Bend into your right knee. 
Your right arm is going to come forward, thumb up. Your left hand is going to pull back as if it was pulling back on a bow. Take a breath here. Right, so your, yep, your foot is on the ground. Let me just take a quick look. Warrior pose, uh, yeah, archer pose is a very, very powerful pose. So Linda, is your foot on the ground? Step your foot forward so it's actually planted on the ground. Yep. Right arm forward, knee bent. Yep, there you go. Inhale. And as you exhale, step your right foot back to meet your left. Bring your hands so that they're in a cup in front of you. Close your eyes and receive. And then do that two more times. Inhale your arms up to the sky. Step your right leg, your, this time your left leg back, uh, back behind you. Inhale, exhale. And on the next inhale, bring your palms together. Bring your left leg forward. Wrap it around your right knee. Left toes to the ground. Inhale and exhale. Next inhale, step the left foot forward. Bend the left knee, bring the right arm forward. I'm sorry, left arm forward, left thumb up, right arm back. Breathe here. Exhale. And then on the next inhale, left foot comes back to meet the right palms cupped. Do that one more time on each side on your own, at your own pace. And don't worry if you can't remember exactly how to do it, you're going to do it beautifully. I see some of you are standing still. All right, there we go. Okay. So it's the reaching up, yep, and the crossing over. The stepping forward and the receiving. And after the second time, when you step back, with your palms forward and receiving, stay there. And once we all meet standing with our palms cupped, Receiving the gifts of the universe. Eyes closed. Feel the flow as you receive. The inhale of bringing the beauty and the gifts of life into your own body. On the exhale, feel the energy giving that back out to the world. Inhaling, permission to be. Exhaling, permission to be. times, deep breaths. And then inhale your arms wide up overhead, palms together. Bring that prayer all the way through your body, all the way down to the floor, and then back up, arms wide and around, and just keep flowing that way. Variation of a Sun salutation, just reaching up, bringing that prayer down to Mother Earth and rising back up. And the next time that you dive down to the earth, stay there. Bend your knees a lot so you can plant your hands. You're going to step back one foot and then the other into downward facing dog. And once you're there, bring your left leg up to the sky just momentarily. Just stretch it up. Exhale it down. Other side up and down. One more nice stretch, whatever that looks or feels like to you. It could be a bend of the knees. It could be a raising of the hips. You could even do a downward dog, or dog split on either side and open up. And when you're ready, you can let your knees drop to the mat, coming back into tabletop. Once you find yourself in tabletop, 
Begin really deep hip circles, bringing your butt all the way back to your heels and to the side, going as fast or as slow. This is kind and gentle to your body. And some days being kind to myself means resting and other days means getting off the couch and taking a walk. Some days it means eating foods that are really nourishing to my body and some days it means giving my emotions a spoonful of ice cream. All right, sometimes more than a spoonful, I'll be honest. But it's finding that balance, it's, it's breaking those rules and it's allowing our hearts to find some peace. So because a peaceful heart can go out into the world and do what that reading said to do, to give other people's perspectives a shot. Move in the other direction if you haven't already. And then come to stillness. Take your right arm out in front of you. Engage your core as your left leg comes up off the mat. Finding balance. Let everything gently float back to the mat. Move to the other side. Lift arm up, right foot. Extending and contracting. Letting everything come down. From here, you're going to inhale your right arm up to the right and then thread it through your left to thread the needle, letting your shoulder come down to the mat. That left hand can either reach the top corner of the mat and move on to your sacrum or up to the sky. Breathe here. I'm going to read a little more. Your soul does not impose its will upon others. It has no desires or expectations of people. Your soul gives others freedom to do whatever they feel drawn to do. Have you imposed your will upon anyone close to you to get them to do what you want in some area? Is there anything you have desired for this person, even if it's something for his or her own good? If so, you can increase your ability to love as your soul does, gently, softly, and without imposing its will upon others, releasing expectations and desires. And as you do this, you free the other people from trying to respond to your desires. You trust other, you trust other people's souls and the universe to bring whatever is best for them and ultimately for you. One more breath here. And then wherever your left hand is, bring it back to support you as you press up. Inhale that right arm out to the right and back to the mat. And move to the other side. Inhaling the left arm up. Exhaling through. Letting your shoulder touch the mat. And then finding a comfortable place that right hand, that right arm. So when we try to impose our will on others, no matter how lovingly we create a prison for them and for us, we cut off communication. We are not able to hear that other perspective. We're depriving ourselves of information that the universe is trying to get to us to hear. I really believe that whenever I have a desire to move in a certain direction, the universe gives me everything I need to get there. Those messages, those directions, they come from different places. And if I'm not willing to broaden my perspective, to open my mind, so I'm going to miss some of those messages. It's okay. The universe will keep sending them. And eventually, maybe not this lifetime, maybe I'll get them next lifetime. But I'd like to do as much as I can now. I'd like to hear as much as I can. I'd like to love as much as I can now from my soul. 
from the eyes of my heart. One more breath. And then begin to move the left, uh, the right hand back wherever, from wherever it is. Use it to support you as you bring the left out, back down. And then move yourself back into easy sitting pose. Before we make our way to our backs, we're going to do something called the body blessing. So sit in a nice, comfortable position. And you're going to start with your hands cupped as they were before, right in front of your heart. Let your elbows actually rest on your ribs, so your hands are pretty close to your body. And close your eyes. Soften your breath. And imagine the blessings of the universe, whatever it is that you need right now. Imagine the energy of that pouring into your hands. Where there's fear, let there be love. Where there's hunger, let there be nourishment. Let the energy of anger be softened the energy of peace. Just feel all of that pouring into your hands and then slowly begin to bring your hands up over the crown of your head as if you were pouring these blessings onto your head and actually let your hands come to the crown of your head and then let them move down the back of your head over your neck forward to your heart center. You can pause there for a moment and then lift them forward, move them over to your solar plexus. And then move them, drag them along your ribs to the back of your body, over to your kidneys. And let your hands just rest on your kidneys right above your sacrum. Feel the energy of fear that lives in our kidneys begin to soften. This is beautiful blessings pour in. And then drag your hands forward across your hips, around your legs. And then bring them back into that cup position in front of your heart. Continue to do this. Let the blessings continue to flow. Just at your own pace, over your head, around and back. Just keep going. Baptizing yourself with the energy of love. Your own love. And then the love of the universe until you come to the realization that it's all the same. Heartbeat of the earth and the heartbeat of your heart, all the same. Next time that you find those blessings resting at your heart center, stay there. We'll chant together a few times before we make our way to our backs. So hung out loud. So inhale. So. So hung. So hung. Just feel for a moment. When you're ready, make your way to your back. Once you get there, plant your feet 
Bend your knees. Take a few rolling bridges, letting your heels be close to your buttocks. Arms at the sides, inhale your arms up overhead as the hips raise up. Exhale the arms down as the hips lower. A few of those. And after the next one, you're gonna bring your knees into your chest. Rock on your spine for a moment, side to side. And then release your arms to a T. Let your knees float over to the left, coming into a spinal twist as you gaze to your right. Back to center. And a gentle flow to the other side. And coming back to center. Letting your feet float up toward the sky. Let your arms float up toward the sky. Relax your shoulders, relax your lower back. Relax your fingers, relax your toes. And just circle your ankles and your wrists for a few moments. One direction and then the other. Let your knees begin to move back toward your chest as you reach for your insteps. Take a nice stretch and happy baby pose. Bringing in the knees close to the arm, your armpits. Yep. Can be still or rock from side to side. And as you release, take any final stretches or twists. Make your way into Shavasana. Settling into the softness of your soul. Be imagining a big, beautiful you made of pure light beneath you, holding you, cradling you. Releasing any energy that stands in the way of Perfect, peaceful rest right now. Mind, body, emotions.
I did not come into this room to see the world through your eyes. I cannot do that. I came here to listen, not merely with my ears, but with my heart. Tell me your story, and may I leave loving more and knowing better. May I leave here carrying you in my spirit as I walk out of this room and into another. Begin to bring fullness to your breath, movement to your fingers and your toes. Let your head rock gently from side to side. A sweet, soft awakening. Let your knees float into your chest. Just for a moment, squeeze your nose towards your knees, really cocooning into yourself and then lowering your shoulders, your head. Bring the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet together. Nice rub of light, spark of light. And then as everything comes to stillness, begin to either rock up and down on your spine or roll over to your right side. And we'll all meet with our palms together in Anjali Mudra, our heart center. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. Please join with me as we seal our practice together with a long satnam, deep, deep inhale. Satnam. Floating your thumbs to the space between your brow dropping your chin into your own amazing perfection. Be loved, believe, be true to you, Satnam. 